Mashuru's just been talking us through affirming shilling and uh, the CBK coming back onto the market. But basically, what we do anticipate, despite the inflation figures, is a shilling that's stable. So to some extent, the uh, basic objective of the CBK starting to take shape and to take root. Um, yes, that's true. Uh, I think that was one of the reasons they... Um, actually, the main reason they, they held the CBR rate where it was last week, based that um, the, the moves they've made over the last, uh, the last quarter of 20, 2011 have actually begun to seep through the market. We've seen a much more uh, strengthened shilling. It's actually stabilized. Um, it's sort of the market is not as volatile as it was uh, towards the close of uh, 2011. Also, inflation has begun to come off. Um, and also, credit, uh, credit growth has also, uh, credit expansion has actually contracted. Um, so to the private sector, that is. So um, all these factors are added to them holding the CBR where it was. And going forward, it actually looks uh, pretty good for interest rates. Um, we're seeing the prime rates, that's the 91 day, the 182 day, the 182 day and the 364 day. Um, they seem to be holding at levels of right. about 20% to 21%. And we, we do expect maybe, uh, going forward towards the end right. of this quarter, they may begin to come off. You talk about credit contracting to the private sector, and obviously that's also reflected in the rising costs of loans. But there's a discrepancy between smaller lenders and bigger lenders. The bigger banks are incurring or uh, adding higher costs to the monies that they, that they lend out. Why is that? Um, basically, of course, when, when um, it comes to the bigger banks, there'll always be the question of uh, stability. Like, uh, for example, if you look at tier one banks, if, for example, an investor is looking at, um, um, looking at a return on some funds on a fixed deposit, for example, you'll get a much better rate from a tier two or tier three bank as opposed to a tier one bank. And this um, basically comes down to um, the security the bank offers. The risk, the risk associated with tier one banks is a lot less. So um, the, you, when, you're, when you're lending money to lower tier banks, you'll price this into the risk. And also, I mean, with, with the, the ability to lend, and with the maturities coming in, a lot of them are actually liquid at the moment, um, quite liquid. So they're, they're, there's a lot more flexibility on their side on, on the rates they'll issue out. All right, let's talk about um, what you mentioned by way of what you're getting on returns and the fixed income side. The value of bonds in general is said to have dropped somewhere in the region of 20%. We have seen interest rates rising. We have seen T-bill rates rising. But we've also seen inflation rising. So you're not getting your money's worth, really, by investing in Kenyan securities. Is that going to change? Um, um, it, has, it actually has begun to change. Uh, of course, through most of the second half of... Um, 2011, we, I mean, most investors were showing um, negative real returns. But um, as inflation has begun to come off and the rates have surpassed inflation, um, so right now we're seeing positive returns, especially on the short end. The yield curve is inverted, um, indicating that, um, especially when you look at inflation, basically it's an indicator that we don't expect these um, the high inflation levels we're seeing to hold uh, for much longer. Mm. This is basically looks uh, short to medium term. Um, so on the short end of the curve, that is um, all the way from uh, 91 days to about to about three to about two two years, um, you can get positive returns with levels as high as 22 mm. percent. Let's talk about the inflation outlook because although we've started seeing an easing in December inflation figures and food costs coming down, there is this caveat, which is the price of electricity. Across East Africa, we're seeing governments removing energy subsidies. In Kenya, as the regulator negotiates with distributors the pricing of electricity, it's estimated that tariffs could rise 26% in Kenya. So the costs of doing business in Kenya are going to rise. The costs for consumers are going to rise. Um, I, I think um, if you look at where we are coming from, uh, it, the, the effect should actually, in a way, net off. Because um, of, in, in the short term, especially in this quarter, we do expect energy costs to come down. Um, the um, KPLC have, have announced, of course, uh, January and February bills, we should expect them to be lower. Fuel prices also came off this week. This will reflect on inflation figures for January, because um, the figures are taking in the, the two weeks, the two middle weeks of uh, January. So we expect this will have quite a big impact on, um, on inflation. When it comes to food, um, of course, uh, there was the frost that um, actually uh, affected a lot of um, the short-term crops. That's crops that grow within um, two to three months, the tomatoes, potatoes. 
So um, that may actually have a negative impact on the food index.